Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hearing is truly the foundational building block of of so much in our life, of both success and enjoyment in life. So much of why you fell in love with the outdoors and with hunting was that time with dad. Yeah. That time, somebody had somebody special, yeah. most likely, that, that brought them into this world. And all of that is through communication, mm-hmm. right? It's the moments, it's the truck ride. It's, we, and that's why we were so purposeful on our slogan. When mm-hmm. we, it's Tetra, hear the hunt. 32 years now into being a hearing doc, the foundation of our whole profession is about restoring the delight of hearing. Because yeah. the, the reality is our inner ear and how our, our, the incredible engineering that has gone into our, our hearing sense, you can never truly repair. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We're coming at you from the beautiful state of Colorado. We're in the sun. It's beautiful. And the snow-capped mountains are behind us. And I'm with Dr. Bill Dickinson, and he is one of the co-founders of Tetra Hearing. Ta-da! Hey, hey. Welcome to the show, if the only, gong show. <laughs> if, we could, if we could make, if 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 audiologists could make the entire universe sound this good, I know, right? In uh, uh, under earphones, but um, it's a good goal, right? We can strive yeah, for that. These earphones do sound like super <laughs> amazing when you're wearing them. I often feel like I could be a singer until I like listen to how I actually sound. And then, you, <laughs> and then during the editing, you got to listen to your yeah, own voice. I don't. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Joe has to listen to my voice, not me. And you go back to work, right? Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just live with this horrible sound. It's just a day to day thing. That's crazy. But so we are. We're in Colorado. We just um, are finishing up a turkey hunt, which I'm still turkey hunting. But uh, you got a beautiful turkey. Oh wow! We're, talk about work your butt off for it, right? Yeah. But that that just adds to the. To the story and the experience, but, um, I, you know, growing up in the Midwest and we've been, I really cut, I'd say cut my teeth. I learned how to become a turkey hunter when we moved to Nashville. And yeah, Where's, um, that's where you currently live. Yep. And, um, and great story of, uh, of kind of my turkey mentor, my, I've loved all the Mr. Fox that we've enjoyed this season collectively as a turkey hunting community. And, and I think the cool part is that every we all have our own Mr. Fox, right? Yeah. Um, mine's Daddy Randall, Randall Eden, and he's the one who taught me how to turkey hunt when we got to Nashville. And But chasing those eastern birds is nothing compared to being out here and doing the elevation. And Well, um, and everybody told you, oh, yeah, you're going to get out there, and those Miriams, they're so easy. You're going to shut the car door, and they're going to come running. <laughs> <laughs> like literally this is what you're told and that is not this is like we're we're elk hunting turkeys because there's literally elk here and we're hunting them similar to elk and they're living in the same terrain and so if you think of a Colorado elk hunt that's literally where we are spot on the the yeah. exact same spot because the elk and the turkeys are in the same habitat yeah. so it is nothing like uh, most turkey hunters have ever experienced uh, I mean last last night we were calling elk I was calling elk with my turkey calls and and uh, your wife's been picking up flipping sheds, <laughs> Lisa. So like, this is, really? Shed there's, master? There's, like, so many layers of special on this trip. Um, our first camp together and, yeah. uh, and some of the work that hopefully we'll talk about here in a few minutes. But hopefully we get to do a bunch more of these. Yeah. But um, it's really it's the first true hunting camp uh, outside of our own, you know, our home cabin and home. and. Yeah. That Lisa's joined me on, and um, this my... is this is for the record the most times in their thirty 
some years of marriage, <laughs> that he's seen Lisa up at 4 a.m. this many consecutive days in a row. We got, we got here, we started hunting Friday, and it's now Thursday. And so I've seen she's her six days. And, I, and, and her hair still looks years. good. I told her last time, like, dang, Lisa, your hair looks well, great. you know how to make a girl feel good. So <laughs> she's like, I don't wash it. I'm like, I don't wash mine either. Uh, where I had. <laughs> yeah, so. No, this has been so much fun. And, um, and you know, kind of the story behind tetra like if you think you know for those of you that are tuning in that maybe have never heard of tetra you know there's been this big emphasis in the market of hearing protection which i'm a huge advocate of um especially with my father having well if you guys watch my show you know my dad's deaf like stone deaf horrible um and it it's bad and i and so i've always been a huge advocate of hearing protection but tetra has taken the concept of hearing protection and you coming from an audiology background have said, not, nah, I don't want to just protect um, someone's hearing in a, in a shooting sports or a hunting environment. I want to enhance their overall experience. And I want to, I want to open up the woods and wake up the woods to people that maybe aren't hearing everything that they could be hearing and, and give them a better experience. And that is, that is what sets you guys apart from every other hearing protection slash enhancement product on the market because there is no other product like yours just um geez it's spot on like um I, I i some of my best moments with the company is is listening to someone new who's just been recently introduced um but yet has like didn't need to be convinced like once yeah. you saw it and and learned about it and kind of saw the science behind yeah. it and already believed in this channel of I saw how hearing loss impacts the human being's life. Oh my gosh. Right? Whether it's family, whether yeah. it's you know, Thanksgiving dinners to trying to figure out where the elk bugle is coming from. Well, um, and uh, like you and I talked about like the first 5 minutes I met Bill, we were crying. <laughs> Maybe not Bill. I was Okay, I'm not going to throw you uh, under that bus, but I was. Because hey, I'm a crier. I, I, I don't hide it. So. Well, because here's the thing. Like, I grew up, and my dad was running chainsaws, uh, loud rock and roll music, shooting guns with no hearing protection, running heavy equipment, no hearing protection. And, and today, he's got a 90% hearing loss. And so, when I was in my 20s, my dad and I, I introduced my dad to bow hunting. And we started bow hunting, and my dad would walk faster than me, and he would walk through a cow mew or walk into something I could hear that was coming and I was trying to grab him to stop him and I would get so frustrated and because he was missing all of this world around him he just couldn't hear it had no idea you know couldn't hear elk bugle couldn't hear cow mew and nothing right well let alone how loud the tv is right like that's a whole nother world so um I ended up, when we really started bow hunting, I ended up going in front of my dad. And I always tell people, I really feel like I became a hunter because my dad lost his hearing. Because I then became his ears. And so when I was learning to hunt, I would look to him uh, for reassurance or to help me navigate something that I might have been unsure about. So I had his experience, but he had my ears. And so... It doesn't take a lot to convince me that you need to protect your ears. I know this. I, I don't do anything without hearing protection. But enhancing that experience, um, I can see it in my dad's face when he hears a bull bugle <laughs> and how much that means to him, right? Like when he can't hear it, he just sits there and he's like, I have no idea. And we're trying to point to him what direction and what's going on. And we're really trying to hear and almost see for him in that capacity. And so when his face lights up and he hears it, uh, everything about him changes, which yeah. which changes how you feel about the importance of hearing. And what what your ears bring to your life, right? Oh. Not just, and it's so easy to overlook if you were blessed enough to start the world off with normal hearing, which meant that you were able to learn to, you were able to learn language, yes. which means you were able to learn to read, which means you were able to learn to be educated. Like it's like hearing is truly the foundational building block of of so much in our life of both success and enjoyment in life and that's not to say it's not to dim diminish that if if you have a significant amount of hearing loss or if you're not born with any hearing, hearing. if you're are truly born deaf or if, if you have acquired hearing loss early in life that you can't have a happy or a successful life yeah. it's just significantly more challenging yeah in in 30 years 32 years now into being a hearing doc 
in in the foundation of our whole profession is about restoring the delight of hearing. Yeah. Right. And 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 what a concept if we actually spend some more time trying to like let's prevent less hearing loss yeah. rather than fix it once it's broken because yeah. the the reality is our inner ear and how our, our the incredible engineering that has gone into our our hearing sense you can never truly repair you can't you can put a band-aid on it you can put a five six seven eight thousand dollar band-aid on it a high-end hearing aid Mm -hmm. when when you look at that kind of money that's why there's so little utilization uh, and compliance of people who need them and don't use them is because of that big price tag with mm-hmm. them. They're very expensive. And, and I, let's like let's just we don't end up that way. The 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 inner ear just doesn't kind of degrade with birthday cake, right? It's it, not an age related function. It, it's only it's so well. It's a great point. It's it's only age related because of we continue to as we progress through life Prolonged. as we get older we continue to cause more damage as we. As we go on dirt bikes and as we use that wood chipper and yeah. as we go to a concert and as we pull triggers and blow duck calls. and Well, you and oh. I were talking about that. Like I was, I grew up, I don't mow my lawn without hearing protection. I don't, I mean, I've always wore like double ears when I shoot firearms except for hunting. I'm horrible. Been, I have historically been horrible about that. Um, I don't, I don't run a weed whacker without hearing protection. I don't even drive my dad's tractor without hearing protection like my dad has always instilled in in me protect it protect it protect it and there's so many people out there they mow the lawn they run a tractor they use a hair dryer consistently <laughs> and they don't think about the damage that over time that really causes to your inner ear well n- number one is we get to be more friends christy i'm trying to figure out where you hide your horn Right, because you are a unicorn. I think right. of like of like somebody who has been that diligent across a lifetime. Yeah. And, and the problem is, but I have good hearing, but it's not perfect. N- n- no, because again, you've had some birthday yeah. cake, right? Yeah. And there's, there's yeah. it's just life. And he's calling me middle aged. <laughs> so it just happened. I still got you beat, girl. And so he thinks I'm back. <laughs> they ate the birthday cake. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, kidding. I know you had a skinny piece. Yeah, just a sliver. <laughs> But it's, in, and that's really, again, the whole premise of Tetra. There's been devices out there that have protected, particularly the hunter's ear. Yeah. Uh, foam plugs do a great job. Earmuffs do a great job. I and mean, there's there's a bunch of easy ways, and you have to use it on the range, especially yeah. if you go to a controlled range. Correct. If you, if you just backyard and, and there's no... You can be as irresponsible as you want. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But everyone was everyone had good compliance on the range, hundred hundred percent compliance, and then you go to a dove hunt or a duck hunt or a goose hunt, and it's zero like, compliance for the most part. And and it's because you couldn't hear, yeah. and and you're there. I mean, so much of why you fell in love with the outdoors and with hunting was that time with dad. Yeah, that time somebody had somebody special. Yeah, most likely that that brought them into this world. And all of that is through communication, mm-hmm. right? It's the moments. It's the truck ride. It's, we, and that's why we were so purposeful on our slogan. When mm-hmm. we, it's Tetra, hear the hunt. And yes, it's being able to identify that gobble that we've been searching for for the last four days. You found it. <laughs> it's, it's about the bugle. It's about the flush. Yeah. It's about the, the wings ripping. It's all yeah. the cool stuff that we love to hear. Well, and what was cool, I'm just going to sidebar on when he says this. I was wearing uh, my new devices today. And I kid you not, I'm sitting there and I heard the turkeys, three hens, I heard them walking through the woods. And we're talking, there's not leaves on the ground. This is like (laughs) sand. I heard them walking and I looked over and I was like, Yogi, turkeys, like 20 yards, whatever, 30 yards away. And they came up and I heard them before I saw them. And if I wouldn't have had the devices in, I really believe that I wouldn't have heard those turkeys, like, walking. And even just communicating with Gavin, like, we have a guide on this trip, which is, is kind of new for me. I, don't, I haven't really done a lot of guided turkey yeah. hunts. So I have yeah. a guide, and he's he's trying to ca- talk to me and things. And, like, he can do the most, like, slight whisper talk. And I'm like, Roger, I got it. I don't miss it. It's not like I'm turning around going, ha! Ah! Like, I mean, I can hear... Yep. Like, you know, even Yogi or my cameraman, Tim, when they talk to me, I'm like, got it, right? Like, it's incredible how it enhances a, a, my experience, and I have good hearing. And you do. And the idea is that you wouldn't, you wouldn't, 
as committed as you are to to um, to protecting your hearing, you wouldn't sit out there this morning with orange foam, orange orange foam plugs in your ear, right? Yeah. Like because you lose all that connection that you just talked about. Well, and even the enhancement from like when the tree when the turkeys were in the roost tree this morning, or when they fly and hit the ground at that. Oh, isn't that cool? Ah, oh, like with the with the hearing. I don't. Is it? Do I call it a hearing aid? You know, it's funny. I, I, I uh, when we, when we, back in 2018, 2019, when we were, you know, releasing everything and um, different groups that we would come across and that were helping us launch the whole company, and everyone kept saying about they kept calling it a hearing aid, and I'd be like, whoa, 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 time out. This is not a hearing aid, because I spent 30 years trying to get people to help with a hearing aid. And all I was reinforced is how much people didn't want a hearing aid. Hearing aids are for old people. Hearing aids are for infirm. It's all this negative stereotype. You know, we'll put glasses on our face in our 20s with plastic lenses because they match our outfit, right? Or they, I, I, feel, I feel more powerful with, with my smart glasses versus my fun glasses. My... I'm going to go get glasses next week. <laughs> But yet we, as a but, society, we've but accepted. But I see what you're saying because I have postponed getting glasses and I need them because I don't want to wear them. Right? Yeah. And I need them. My right eye is blind. But I need glasses, but I don't want to wear them. Yeah. So I get what you're saying about people having that reluctance to wear a device. But with the device on, literally the things that you can pick up on from a sound perspective is unreal and you think about an elk like how many times a bull elk has crept up behind me or came in silent if i had a device in how much more would i have picked up right like it's game changing so our first hunt out here and this has happened and this is like this is um the coolest part of the of the entire company is is truly is the stories that come out of turkey season because it's usually um, it's usually a, a guy or gal with more birthday cake, right? They can't hear the gobble. It's you know their their ears have just been kind of used hard, worn worn out, and lots of country music concerts. It's it's everything, right? It's that accumulation of hearing loss, and now I can't localize where the gobble is. I don't know how far it is. I'm I'm hunting with somebody. I can't hear it. They can hear it. Yeah. And so the amount of stories, the text, the emails, the pictures, the everything that comes in is just so awesome during turkey season yeah. right um it's cool during the fall hunting season where it's like man i can blow a call i've never been able to blow a call mm -hmm. and have this in my ear like how, how'd you do it type thing and um but that turkey hunter is so passionate about it in most of the the biggest thing that everyone comes back with is spit is spitting and drumming mm -hmm. in that and we had that exact exact most exact, people haven't heard a drum but it, they're doing it. it. They just can't hear it. And, they, and it's going on behind them. That's how we found out on our first hunt here that that bird didn't do what he was supposed to do. <laughs> he came in behind. And then all of a sudden, oh, and I had I had my amp pods in, and I'm like, they're strumming, they're strumming, they're mm -hmm. strumming, right? And and that was when I was I got to hunting with Gavin that day. And all of a sudden now the 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 20 year old right is like looking over his shoulder he's like he's behind us i'm like i know i can hear him <laughs> you're like i heard him five minutes ago um and it's it's one thing when like you're doing it yourself but i'm telling you we get a monday morning and i get a text with a picture and it's a it's a granddad and his granddaughter and yeah. and he's like i heard him drumming i haven't heard it in probably 15 years Ugh. i mean like that's that that's where we get crying in the, S yeah. in the sci booth that's right? what happened we're like <laughs> like legitimately uh, it's because it does reawaken and reinvigorate the, your passion for the outdoors and one thing we were talking about in camp which really hits home i think for everybody is like for example when you hear an elk bugle and there's three guys standing on the mountain Everyone points a different direction. <laughs> uh, and, and you kind of started to explain why. Kind of walk our listeners and viewers through yeah. why, that, why that occurs. How, how our brains are able to localize where sound comes. I mean, we basically, well, first, if you step back, like our, our brain is getting information 24-7, 360 degrees around us, Right. You can, and what I mean by that is, is whether someone calls your name, whether you hear a noise, whether you hear a, a gobble or a bugle, and it happens over here on my right side, the reason that I know that it's there is because 
this ear, my right ear, got uniquely different cues than my left ear. Okay. Right? It's louder. It hit here. It hit here. It's it's faster on this side. And the frequencies are completely different. By the time my head and my hat and my shoulders and the tree I'm next to block off, the, my left ear gets a different signal, which means I just heard the gobble and I know it's back over this side. Right? Okay. The first thing that we try to do um, in designing all Tetra products is the ability to kind of restore the, the first thing is to get both ears hearing equal again. And then we take both ears and we get both ears up into normal, uh, normal hearing as much as we can. But the only reason that I know that that gobble occurred here is that my two ears are both, I'm still blessed enough to have normal hearing, and they're equal on both sides. That's how the brain knows that there's a difference. Okay. If if my right ear has a whole bunch of hearing loss, let's say 60% hearing loss, okay. and my left ear has 40% hearing loss, and he gobbles over here on my right side, my left ear is hearing it. So now my brain thinks, because my, it's, I have too much hearing loss, I didn't hear the gobble over here. With your right my, ear. With my right ear, because that's where the, more, the, the bigger so, hearing loss is. My left ear hears it, which tells my brain, oh, that gobble's over here. When really it came from over here. And so the first thing we do is rather than have your, your ears, your hearing like that, we get both ears to be equal. And now you can localize. And now you can judge distance. That bird's 100 yards away. That bird's 400 yards away. And, um, and then what we do is we take both ears and get them up to normal or as close to normal as we can. And, and I'm, just, I'm just being a regular hearing doc at that point. I mean, I've done that for 32 years. Yeah in the profession in um it's fascinating to me what brought you into this profession you were just wanting to restore people's experience <laughs> uh you, you mean a long long time ago yeah yeah yeah. a I mean, whole bunch do, of birthday yeah, cake ago uh we've eaten some cake uh so okay the story goes uh i wanted to be a veterinarian me right. too <laughs> really oh yeah <laughs> i did i did i wanted to uh, do that so bad in uh in chemistry got in the way is basically what my story was and um in life got in the way you know you're 19 and you don't have a lot of confidence and um you get punched in the gut and uh that gut punch you know got me out of uh, a pre-vet program i stumbled through psychology really enjoyed that oh boy he's been evaluating me this whole week grew up in a family (laughs) of teachers and helpers and um and uh, I met a I met a girl I met a Christmas tree at a Halloween party at Michigan State University and um, she was an audiology major. It's the first time I ever heard the word and um, uh, never got the girl. Audiology got me the girl I have now. Yeah. Uh, awesome and my awesome Lisa that you got to spend some time with for and um, she's a speech pathology yeah um, major and. Um, I just I just fell into like the the love of of how we connect to the world around us. But it's right? interesting because the audiology and how the brain functions and how your body reacts is so psychological anyway. So you were kind of on key with oh I'm going to be a psychology major for a brief second. But also on the vet side you're like you're still enhancing the lives and helping, right? So it's not too far off, right? Um and well and little uh, little sneak peek we got some cool, some cool. Um, I didn't give up on my dogs yet. Uh huh. Little, uh, little, little taste test there. Yeah, so, we love um, our dogs. <laughs> so it, it, absolutely, right. it's it's about. I mean, life is about connection. I mean, how much fun have we had oh. just kind of like becoming friends with you and Yogi and mm-hmm. um, and even being able to hang out with, you know, this camera guy you dragged in here, I right? Know. I mean, Tim's a great guy. And yeah. You come to good. a camp and you meet new guys. I mean. That's what makes life yeah. good. It, it's 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 about this, yeah. right? And um, and that's that's literally what we've tried to do with the company, and it's the brand that we're trying to be. It's it's about, uh, you know, here the hunt is is the back of the tailgate as mm-hmm. much as it is in the woods. It's the biscuit at the gas station. It's yeah. it's the serious talks and the fun talks. Um, I mean, I don't. I, I don't uh, I don't know how it happened, but most of my kind of the biggest talks that I've had with my kids just one-on-one like the most in-depth emotional um like draining both exciting and draining just like yeah. raw have been in the outdoors yeah. it's either sitting in the boat with my daughters or sitting in a deer stand or driving to camp with my son and like those raw i mean that's here the hunt yeah i mean it truly is like um 
And that's what we were trying to do is just create a product that when the bad stuff happens, the boom, the bang, the the motors, right? When the noise happens that is there, that you that you have something in your ear to protect it. Mm-hmm. And um, in, in the, in, you know, we've gone far enough uh, as a society with advancing health and wellness and safety. Um, and we've kind of left the ear, the outdoor industry has left the ear behind. Yeah. And, and um, it's really, it's sad. And I am totally guilty of it because I have never wore, well, I take it back. I've wore hearing protection, like foamy ears or whatever, like in a box blind if I know I'm shooting whitetail. Uh, because typically I don't hear them anyway. I just see them kind of run across a field and, and in that, those box planes freak me out when they, woof, you know, so loud when you shoot out of those. And so I've always had like if ear foams or something in those, that's pretty much the only hunting experience that I've been really consistent with wearing ear pro. Um, so I've been, I've been guilty of it. It does, it rings your bell, yep. you know, and one of the things that we were talking about that I found fascinating is there's a certain age range. What is it? 30 to 55. Yeah. That yeah. what happens to your hearing or what your brain absorbs information wise through your ears has a long-term effect on your, your likelihood of getting Alzheimer's later in life, yep. which I thought was fascinating. So like if you're a person with hearing damage and you don't enhance that damage and help your brain get more sound input, you're more likely to get Alzheimer's later, man, you're a quick study, Christy. Like uh, it's it, you're spot on with uh, with all of that. It's and, quick, and but it blew my, it blew my mind. Like when well, I heard this so, the other night, I'm like, okay, so if you're m- my age and you have a hearing damage, and and actually, I, mean, I have good hearing. My husband's hearing is eh. There's a lot of people that are my age that have terrible hearing. Uh, you, you know, by not taking care of that, by not aiding that, or developing. Um, what your brain receives with sound you're actually hindering your your long-term lifestyle you know possibility like you, who wants alzheimer's you know if you think about it um where i think it, it got super simple is when when it, you, know, you sit back at at all my big you know my big medical jobs and industry jobs and professional a- appointments that i've had across my career and you you use big words and you talk about research studies and you, and I just think that we've missed the boat a lot yeah. on how we talk about hearing to general society. Yeah. And so one of the things that we've, we've, I've tried to do is change what we talk about. And one of the examples that we, we use hearing loss as an example of a blocked filter, mm-hmm. right? Everyone knows when they're trying to get uh, their outboard, their outboard engine started and there's a, there's a $4 fuel filter that's plugged up and it's not getting, it's not getting the new fuel that it Mm -hmm. wants, right? An oil filter, a furnace filter, an air filter. And what we know is that those filters, when they block up, they cause damage on the backside. If If you, if you never, ever change your oil filter, you can dump all the new oil in there. You can drain the old oil out, put new oil in. If you never change the filter... You're going to destroy that engine. Yeah. And if we think of the inner ear in those terms, and just that the the inner ear is just a very delicate filter bank. It's a it's a bunch of very very small tiny nerve endings, which which everyone kind of seems to have uh, to to grab to the to the name hair cells, right? I got I those little hairs in my ear. I was literally thinking about that. It was you get old, you get more hair in your yeah. ear. Is it related? It is not. You, you yeah. started. <laughs> Okay, so that's a really good point. Uh, the day that you ended up on this planet, you had you started out with the amount of hair cells that you're going to have. Okay, which and is it, hearing it, ability. It is the it's the nerve fibers that pick up on certain on certain. And so hair cells. Think of hair cells like a a piano keyboard, in that you have uh, you have bass tones and mid tones and and treble tones, and the inner ear is designed just like that. And you have the kind of this this little row of carpet fibers, which are all these, there's 15,000 hair cells approximately uh, that you start off life with. And what happens, uh, we do things along the way that start destroying those hair cells. It's kind of like... Um, it's like punching out the keys on a keyboard. And all of a sudden it's not working. Yeah, and eventually it's not going to work. It's it's. Uh, you lose a tone range when you punch out those keys. 
And the same thing happens with hearing. And what's interesting is you'll find people that have, you know, like high tone hearing loss or low tone hearing loss. Men tend to lose a lot of high tone hearing loss. I think they just want to tune out their wife's voice. So 50-50 on whether this is a real thing. But um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, But there's different tonal losses too. So like you're saying, imagine if you take a keyboard and you punch out some keys those keys that are missing, well, it's now going to affect the tone range that uh, of the of the music that you can I, the the piano plays, right? Hundred percent. And some t- and so what's happened is that most of those keys, as you just got us to, and man, you must have been studying this ear stuff because you're no, you're I getting spot no, on with it. I but, didn't study uh, it at typically, all. I have a deaf dad. <laughs> typically, those missing keys on the on the piano keyboard, those hair cells, those nerve fibers yeah. in our ear, are in the higher frequencies. Yeah. And it's the difference between hearing an F or an S. The F is fit. The S is sit, right? And so one sound tells you what the entire word. And, and, and if I just said, if the people are hopefully listening to this, if somebody has high frequency hearing loss, they may not have heard the difference between those two words. Yeah. What do you say? It sounded the same. It, right? If you don't, you have to have... Very good hearing to be able to just in the high frequencies to determine that F versus the S. Okay. So don't name your kid Frank. <laughs> Otherwise, he's just going to be rank. <laughs> one of the one of the, the smiles I'd always get uh, when we started the career, um, we were using, we would read a list of 25 or 50 words. You'd listen to beeps and a hearing test, and you'd also listen to speech, right? And sometimes the, the speech would start high and get very soft. And there's another test that we gave it to, we would do at a, a comfortable level that you should be able to get 100%. If your ear is working well, you'll get 100%. And um, on one of the lists, it was, you know, be say the word red, say the word get, say the word kind, say the word ditch. And all of a sudden, you know, they'd be repeating all the words and, and I, we would want to know, did you hear, did you hear a D or a B? Right? Oh. Say the word. And so all of a sudden the patient would be repeating the words back and you, it would be say the word ditch. And then they'd kind of turn their head and look at you in the window. <laughs> they're because they, like, they're, cause they're hearing they B. Didn't, they didn't hear the D. They, they heard, heard the B. Because the D is a higher frequency than the B, right? And so, um, I mean, my entire 30 years I've snickered at that dumb little joke, right? But it happens. <laughs> that's how predictable it is. Yeah. Is that if you don't hear that, and that's why we do those tests. Well, here's the fun part is all I did is I took that science when David and I built the company. And we took that type of science because guess what? That gobble and that cluck and that yelp and the kiki and the fly down and the spin and drumming high, high is, pitch. Is, is a combination of high and, and low and mid. And, and this idea of what we could do is go through and we could digitize and figure out exactly where those frequencies are. Which keys. And that's where we got all of our patents. Uh, it was built on... That we can say, all right, in order to, I'm not worried about um, ditch or bitch or sit or fit. I'm worried about, you know, being able to hear the gobble. So we, we, we go after the frequencies. Mm-hmm. There's there's five or six absolute critical frequencies that distinguish that gobble that's a gobble versus the crow call versus the blue jay call versus. And so we can, what we've done is we've started with a very, very, very high end, sophisticated uh, circuit components, microphone amplifiers, digital chips, speaker systems that go into you know five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar hearing aids. We took those same components and built a really, really cool turkey aid that allows you to. But it's not just turkey. Focus. It isn't just turkey. You have yeah. different modes, <laughs> and this is so crazy. So we are sitting in the house the other night and we're talking, and I put in. Hold on. We have to take a pause. Oh, how dare the oil and gas guys I come know. and actually disrupt a podcast in the middle of beautiful Colorado. I know, right? <laughs> so the other night we were sitting there and I, and I put in, so these are my uh, personal devices that uh, Bill custom fit for me while at SCI, which is awesome because you're at these events. Um, I'm going to plug my battery in here. Um, 
I have tiny ear holes also, by the way. I have, my ear holes haven't grown since I was an infant. Not that you all care, but, um, <laughs> so. I said they probably haven't grown. We're they're not like... <laughs> very small. I have a very small brain. Um, ear holes. Um, so we're sitting in the house and I have these set to turkey and I'm listening to everybody talk while the devices are in turkey mode. Because the cool thing about these devices, they don't just enhance and make things loud. Like Bill is trying to describe or describing is they enhance certain sound ranges. So within these devices, there's a tiny button you push just on the top end of the device. And in your ear, you'll hear it say predator, turkey, range. Uh, what is the other one? Uh, conservation? Uh, Con- land management. Land so management. So we put in, like, again, we custom build it to your lifestyle. So right? it has and all so- these sounds so yep. you press the button and it enhances different sounds so i'm in turkey mode and everybody's talking and they sound kind of weird like th- like from compared to my normal hearing the turkey mode people's voices were just off and then when i put it into range mode their voices <laughs> were much more normal but enhanced sounding and i'm like bill how come everybody sounds weird in turkey mode but in range mode they sound like more normal, but just more amplified. And then you explained, you're like, I'm so glad you noticed this. <laughs> I mean, it's super cool that, like, that, that you pick that up naturally. And, and what we did, to go, to go back to what you just built on the piano keyboard, when you're in turkey mode, we, we turn on 16 different keys than when you're in range. Yeah. I mean, they, there may be some overlap. Yeah. Um, and in between the programs, there's... Uh, there is a lot of different overlap like between our deer program and our elk program. Mm-hmm. I mean, the elk is absolutely going after the bugle and the mew and the bark. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, yes, you can hear deer make those cool sounds, especially if you're chasing whitetails. I mean, mm-hmm. at certain times Threat. of the year, they're really vocal. Um, most of the time, you don't want to hear the deer because it's usually, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and that's what you don't want to hear. Snort. Um, yeah. But uh, what, what we're truly what we're looking for is to give more environmental awareness. So we're activating different keys on that range program or the yeah. deer program, or to be able to blow a duck call. That panel keyboard needs to have completely different keys turned on than what the turkey program mm-hmm. does, and the turkey has to have something different than the elk. And when you put them in, you can. I mean, depending on your hearing, I, and I don't know if that's just me because I've good hearing or but i had an audible difference in the in the modes yep. um of like wow i had more enjoyment if i were indoors wearing this i would probably want it in range mode which that's what it's designed for it's designed so when you're at the range and you have a range master that is giving you instructions that you aren't like having to look and try to hear and you can stay on task ensure that you're following instructions and be safe um and also protect it well and and have some fun right yeah. like like Bill, you're there you're you're learning you're trying new things you're you're working with your, your all of your your weapon and the yeah. ballistics and the, you're you're teaching a, a new shooter you're teaching a young kid you're teaching an old person it doesn't mm-hmm. matter right like that but in in what is I, I actually believe that there's a liability in, I mean, it particularly go to a lot of either private or public ranges. Yeah. And, and obviously hearing protect, eye and ears are mandatory. Yep. Right? And you get, um, man, we keep coming back to the guy with birthday cake, right? Yeah. And so you get, you get someone who's got a lot of hearing loss and you make them wear hearing protection, but yet you don't enforce it. You have to be able, you should have a minimal hearing capability when you're on a live range. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you could have a 60, 70, we could put your father on a public range and put hearing protection on him, and we just created a deaf man. Literally. I mean, uh, completely. Like, the world goes dark from an auditory standpoint with someone like, as much hearing loss. And I think there's a liability there. There's mm-hmm. a safety concern, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And not, this is not about your father, right? But there's, well, no, this is but... going on every day yeah. at some range. No matter where you pursue the wild, never leave home without Onyx Hunt. Onyx gives hunters the confidence to apply and draw tags in areas they've never set foot in, extending hunting seasons and opportunities. Always know where you stand with public and private land layers, unit boundaries, and more. Onyx can even be downloaded directly to your phone for use when you don't have service. Wherever you pursue the wild, hunt with Onyx. In essence, you've created 
a deaf person. Yeah. Or someone who's, and it doesn't have to be that, but you don't, you don't have to go completely dark. You could take someone who has a mild to moderate loss and is able to get by, kind of like with your eyesight example, right? Or your vision loss example. Mm-hmm. You're able to get by and you're, you're, you're clearly not willing to do something about, <laughs> about classes until it gets to a, a point of pain. Like it, your life is now uncomfortable enough. Mm-hmm. And with you, it's probably going to have something to do with out here. Well, that, the, you're, yeah. <laughs> that you're not able to do yeah. something at 1,200 meters <laughs> yeah. or you're not able to identify something at 280 yards. Yeah. And, um, and then you're like, okay, I need time to get glasses. To, time to like, do, I need to do something a change. about this, right? Um, and so it, you could take that mild to moderate person hearing loss and you put a 20 decibel NRR on them or 25 NRR, and you've now taken, you know, their moderate loss down and, to a severe loss. Yeah. And um, and so the, the whole point of what we are trying to do is allow a natural, normal hearing experience um, and to be able to communicate. And so that when the damaging noise, again, whether it's a tractor, a chainsaw, or a trigger pulled, mm-hmm. That you're fully protected in the... Um, but without compromising the experience. Yeah. <laughs> or it, w- what you're there to do. I mean, yeah. you... you um, and we haven't even talked about this, Christy, but like, you, I mean, you've built an incredible career uh, in the outdoor space. And um, I do want to talk about the, part of the reasons why it's so important for, for me and for Tetra to become and build a partnership beyond a friendship, a true partnership, um, with, with what you're doing in your work and pursue the wild. And, but what, what goes on with that is that you are, you do a great way of, of educating mm-hmm. and of, and, and d- disto- of bestowing knowledge on people. And, um, and the, and the cool part is that you've had your entire career of being able to work around highly, um, uh, extremely well-built pieces of equipment, right? Mm-hmm. And this scope will do this great under these conditions, right? Night or this gun the will do. That's what he's saying. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and there's a reason why. It's, it's a reason why they're one of the industry leaders, yeah. if not the industry yeah. leader. I'm not here to make that point. Right? Yeah, Roger that. Um, yeah, no. And so, but there's a I reason no. why. I'm sorry, I'm kidding. It's a, it's a reason why it's good, and it's a reason yeah. why it does. It's a reason why this camo works really well mm-hmm. uh, in, in this western mm-hmm. state of Colorado, in this bottom lands doesn't work so great out here necessarily well actually um, against the juniper it trees is, it is and i shouldn't say because my 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 dear friends are mossy oak but yeah. i mean like, like camo is specific to yeah. the season yeah camo is specific to the region yeah your weapon is specific to the season mm-hmm. um and and you know you got you got companies like asat or their t at uh, apex ass that, that's combining the apex ass companies oh boy <laughs> those, my, uh, my, those ass my, companies my out there my apex guys <laughs> You're going to have fun with that. <laughs> That's a combination of TSS and Apex. <laughs> there <but> we go. <laughs> companies like Apex that brought TSS, uh, you know, to the market and, like, made a great shell and have completely changed what we can do uh, in our in the ability to be lethal um, uh, with all of that. But, like, our, our outdoor shooting and hunting gear is specific to the pursuit. Mm-hmm. And... Until Tetra, no one has treated the ear like that. No. And so, like, the the magic has been, like, we just kind of jumped in line with, you know, you wear a certain boot, you wear a certain camo, you wear a certain, you got your warm weather gear, your light weather gear, your, uh, you know, your, your weapons change, your ballistics change, everything, your optics change based on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and what we did is built a product and a series of products and we can be super flexible, like you said. You 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 have a, a highly custom. You have a customized form factor in your ear that fits only your ear. And trust me, that shell will not fit in anyone else's ear. I can. You talk about Cinderella's slipper. I'm special, uh, which is very cool. <laughs> um, and then we are able to custom build the the programs. Mm-hmm. And that'll that'll probably wax and wane. Like you may you we may come up with a different program that that you like better and, and that you find yourself not using one of the the elk program and the deer program maybe too close and we come out with a it, there's an evolution that could possibly happen a rattlesnake program right well, and so that now program you're, in Wyoming. you're yeah right Oof. um and so we, we can be very specific on creating what your unique needs are yeah uh, so talk to everybody about the buy-in 
So we understand how important hearing enhancement is and hearing protection. You know, enhancement protects your future. Uh, hearing protection protects your present and your future also. But, the you know, enhancing the sound that you're receiving helps your brain potentially combat Alzheimer's, right? So enhancement is important. So when people are looking at, okay, I, I want a Tetra product, what's the path for them? Well, the one of the paths is to um, attend a trade show where they're been, at. That's so what I did. <laughs> we can do. We can meet. Uh, we were matter of fact. Uh, I gotta get the reason I'm racing out of Colorado is to get home, and uh, we're moving offices. I'm super excited about that for three days, and then we pack up the trailer and we go down to Dallas, and we're at the at the DU Expo, right? Mm-hmm. And so we do. We do the whole show uh, thing, and so if you if you want to just come and do a demo and listen to the product, uh, the cool part about our um, about the DUX Expo is that um, they have a they have a live shooting range, and then on the in the inside of the whole Texas Motor Speedway is all the vendors. Yeah. Be, so you can go out and pull triggers and experiment with different guns, and um, and all that can be shot, you know, under Tetra. And so that's like the most extreme, mm-hmm. where you get to blow a duck call, pull a trigger, and and be able to converse while you're wearing Tetra. And they're also at events like SCI where they have a uh, ground blind that they have converted into <laughs> like a. Hold on, my sneeze. <laughs> oh, Excuse bless me. you. And you can find them at conventions like SCI, which is where I found you, um, where they have like a ground blind that they've converted into like a soundproof booth. And you can actually go in there and they'll test your hearing. And I'm not going to lie. Like I'm sitting in this ground blind and I'm like pins and needles. Like, okay, I got my earmuffs on. Same as like I'm wearing now. And I'm like waiting for it, waiting for it. You're like in the dark. You're like, when am I going to hear it? You have no idea what you're waiting for. You don't know what you're going to hear, but you're going to hear something and you're like... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And then all of a sudden you hear this tiny faint sound. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> and there's a guy standing outside judging you because he's, you know, knows when you're not hearing something and he's judging you. He has his clipboard in his hand and he's like looking at you and you raise your right hand when you hear with your right ear and you raise your left hand when you hear with your left ear and you're like sitting there for like five minutes you're like I don't hear anything <laughs> no but um so then you raise your hand and then you know he compares your your hearing right to left side with different sound frequencies yep. and at the end you know you get to talk about it like you know what was your hearing loss range and you know what the one thing that was interesting is he said that after you've heard one of the noises uh, a lot of times it's easier to hear it in the other ear because you know what to expect. Your brain has now been trained. There's there's kind of an argument uh, that do you start loud and say, okay, this is what the sound is that you're listening for, and then you make it softer and softer and softer and softer until it goes away? Or do you start low where you can't hear it and make it Build louder, up. louder, louder, louder? And uh, there's, again, years of data that shows if you start low and make it louder, you're going to come closer to where they're truly hearing it because once... If, if you if you can hear at 20 and I give you 50 and I keep going slower and slower, lower and lower and lower, you may stop at like 25 and because you think it's soft, right? Yeah. Versus if I start at zero and get you up, you'll trigger that 20 response quicker than and easier than if I start really loud because your brain already says, well, it should sound like this. Yeah. Um, versus kind of what you did. It's like you were waiting, waiting, waiting. And I remember like when you first saw it, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, it was literally. Like you won like, a prize. It was like, like bingo yes, or something. I right? heard it. <laughs> but it was, it was fascinating uh, to me. And I was really happy that I have better hearing than my husband. So it, it, like I don't have an excuse for when I ignore him. Um, so that's well, also I, that a factor un- now. Unfortunately, I also tested Yogi's hearing and now he's got doctor pr- patient privilege. And yeah. so, <laughs> but I can, I, w- I will give you a hint. There's a difference between hearing loss and listening. Okay. <laughs> and so like, just, just be aware of yeah, that. Yeah, Yogi. So, Stop um, ignoring me. Uh, and we did also discover that my husband has dirty boy ears inside his head. They're, they're just a different type of unique. They right? were. Like yours are uniquely small. <laughs> His are dirty. His were uniquely waxy. But again, <laughs> we're able We're to, not judging you, Yogi. We're able... No, it's normal. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how the good Lord designed it. Yeah. Um, no, so it was... So anyway, when you go to the booth, I'm getting way rabbit hole. You go to the booth, you can but, get your hearing tested. And then if you, if you choose to have like a custom pair 
crafted they'll actually craft them like get the molds like you literally have toothpaste squirted in your ear kind of deal that's what it seemed like it's not toothpaste don't do that at home um so they uniquely form that for your ear right there and they take everything they need for the impression and, and then they send you your impressions within what's the timeline uh we, we turn around typically is around two weeks yeah. um that we get from from taking the impressions to having it built, come back, program, yeah. test it, QC, QA, and then send it back uh, to you. But so what about those people that don't want to do? So this was super interesting. It's interesting that that's, that's, how, that's, your, that's, that's how you got to know Tetra. Yeah. Um, we'll probably, we will probably do somewhere. Um, the wind is going to blow us away now. If, if, we keep, if we keep on the, the track that the, you know, since we've been on since January, we'll probably do somewhere north of, of 8,000 units this year. Um, the majority of those, 95, 96% of those, uh, you don't get done like how you just described. It's not at a show. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not engaging face-to-face or belly-to-belly with anyone from Tetra. But the cool part, and again, what really separates us from, from anything else out there, is that you can have that same experience online. So yeah. you can go on and, and it can be a combination of, we've got an incredible customer service team. I got some, a couple of guys that are just absolutely rock stars at what they do and they can, they can switch gears. They can be talking about uh, upland pheasant hunting in South Dakota one minute and chasing Osceola's the next minute and mm-hmm. shooting 1200 meters the, the next call. And um, so between email and chat and texts and phone calls, and going through our website, we try to give you that same level of experience. We have a fully calibrated, completely scientific hearing test on our website. And so what we That's did... That's crazy. I didn't realize you had that. Yeah. What we did with you in the sound shack that we built um, at the show, you can you could go home tonight and put um, a set of AirPods in your ear, or however you listen to music is what we say, and plug it in and you go through and you run a little calibration tone that sets the volume between your your iPhone or your iPad or your Android or however you listen to to sound plugged into your desktop laptop, um, and you can test your own hearing. Oh, and so the the super cool part is uh, you know at eight o'clock someone in you know Topeka Kansas could be on the website. They go through and whether they spend ten minutes or ten hours, they could do a hearing test. Uh, they could have a couple of questions. They call the office eight o'clock the next morning and ask the questions. We walk them through it. They go back to the website, buy it. And if it's a custom device, then we help secure locally where they need to get your impressions. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's typically a, a hearing aid shop or an ear, nose and throat or an audiology clinic or something like that. Um, but again, only 40% of, of our sales are that is that custom device. Yeah. And and honestly, we, you and I have never talked about this because your ears are so small that you couldn't wear our universal device. But no. our universal device is really what st- started the whole company. I, I yeah. mean, the reason that we that we designed it like how we did was that you could do all that. That guy in Topeka, Kansas could be on the website, f- feel good about it, buy, the, buy what's called the Alpha Shield mm-hmm. or the Amp Pod. Which uh, is what you have. Do the hearing test. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, all of a sudden at 8 o'clock, rather than making a phone call and asking some questions and figuring out where to get ear impressions in Topeka, Kansas, uh, what our guys are doing is that they've got the hearing test, they've got the order, we put it into production and order fulfillment, and we go through, we go to the shelf, pull off that universal fit, build the whole thing, program it, build his custom programs in there, and at 4 o'clock it goes out the door shipped, and he has it in two days. And so. his universal fit, that... That also typically fits women too. Hundred percent. So it's um, not just like a, it's not a like gender related because everybody has different size ear canals depending on people. But this is more like if you think about like a plug and play headset or headphone, they fit most people when you go to buy them. So it's very similar to that. You just happen to have very special small size, petite size ears, right? Um, we have ears that. I've taken care of, we have, we have ears that are the opposite. They want to buy the universal fit, but they're, they're a triple XL large ear, right? And the universal fit is too small for that big ear. So we have to go to a custom. Okay. And so it's really, um, it's, it's really what your needs are. How much power do you need? We, we look, 
we try to give you uh, 85, 88 percent of what goes of those 8,000 units will will have a personal touch. We are yeah. personally programming your hearing test. We're personally programming whether you want land management and predator and elk and um, whatever those multi pursuits are that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, we're programming for your hearing loss. We're programming to make your ears equal in both on both sides, so you have your localization returned and restored or. Um, and so it's a very high touch. What we're trying to do is, is provide a very high touch to a digital or a virtual or an online mm-hmm. experience. The fun parts are when we get to pack up the trailer and go to a show. I mean, they're exhausting, yes. I'm not going to kid you, right? You but know that. But, they're fun. They're but a good it's time. a ton of high yes. energy. And I love seeing people. I love meeting customers. And, and, mm-hmm. and the best part are the returning customers yeah. that came back and they're like, man, remember me? We're from, you know. Erie, Pennsylvania, and we bought these last year. I can't believe how my dad could hear, right? Or yeah. how, and, and the cool part is like now my eight year old son's wearing the same thing that my 68 year old father is wearing. Mm-hmm. And that's magic, right? Yeah. Like, like, you know, you're doing it, you're doing the right thing there. Yeah. And that's, yeah. if we can just, and this is where I'm, so I'm gonna, I need to toot your horn a little bit. Like, this is, this is where I'm so excited to partner with someone like you is to be able to, to have that influence on the consumer's life and, and just to say like, hey, there's been something going on in the outdoor hunting and shooting industry yeah. that we've not that we've been ignoring. We haven't been mm-hmm. talking about it. And and I think that it is it is inherently flawed if you introduce that seven, eight, nine year old introduce I don't care if it's a thirty nine year old, if you introduce someone to their first duck hunt. And they walk in there, and they're so excited the night before. That eight-year-old kid gets to go to the big blind on opening day, yeah. and everyone's there. His cousins are there, blah, blah, blah. And they walk in, and daddy and older brothers and Uncle Tommy and his cousins over here, and nobody has any hearing protection in. And yet there's 10 cases <laughs> of, of ammo that they're planning on shooting mm-hmm. and blowing duck call. Like, you, you just taught that new hunter, I don't care if he's 28, 58, or 8, that a duck hunter does, a real duck hunter doesn't wear hearing protection, mm-hmm. right? A real upland hunter, a real dove hunter, a real, like, and those are super heavy trigger pull examples. And honestly, that is what the company is built on, is to change, change that conversation, mm-hmm. And to change, and, and, and to just make change in the industry that w- we can't allow that any longer. And, and yeah. that eight-year-old, if he goes from eight to fifty-eight with that type of life, those are the ones that have very poor outcomes with things like Alzheimer's and dementia and memory loss and, and short-term processing problems. And um, and if we can kind of clean that up in between, we're improving a generation. I, and you now think about what you're doing to all of the lives that are going to touch mm-hmm. that future 48-year-old, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the career, the mm-hmm. and, and we, we've never even talked about things like there's strong, uh, strong data that show the that people with hearing loss have poor economic opportunities. They have poor income opportunities across their lifetime, right? Interesting. They have lower. They have lower income. And a lot of it is because communication. They they struggle. They 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 don't they don't raise their hand as often, right? So they may not get the promotion that they really do deserve. Mm-hmm. They they don't go out after work for the drinks and the dinner. And if you're entertaining clients, you get out of after dinner as quick as you can because I know everyone's going to go listen to music and go to the bar and and that's too hard for me and mm-hmm. I can't hear. And but yet that's where relationships are built. built. Um, and so, I mean, there's, hearing loss is a very real thing. It's not mm-hmm. a, it's not an inconsequential part of hearing, mm-hmm. of, of aging. Yeah. It's not the joke about. And it's not, you don't, you can prevent or, or I should say minimize mm-hmm. the loss that you might have as you eat birthday cake in, <laughs> in years. You know what I mean? Um, so you can minimize this and it's something that, you know, we need to be teaching across the board and really embracing um, the importance of it and, you know, having a universal fit and people always say, well, I don't like those earmuffs or this or that. They're, they're bulky. They're big. They're this, they're that they're in my way. Well, okay. Those, yes, I agree a hundred percent. They're bulky. They're big. They're in your way. These aren't these enhance an experience. This is nothing like those products. 
those products are designed to just amplify or protect. These are designed to enhance and, and, and an experience. Personalized. Yes. Right? I mean, they're personalized around your hearing and your lifestyle. That's right. And um, the, the, the downside, the, the, the weak link of, of Tetra, if I'm going to be super critical of, of my baby, um, is, is that the reason it works so well is because we start with a really, really high-end, expensive platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that we've done, you know, leaps and bounds. Again, those same, those same exact, and I, I want to talk about it because it always kind of ends up to be, it's some of the most comments that we get on social media. They, they, like, love what you're doing, wish I could afford it, right? Yeah. And, and, and part of my, my comments is, like, I, I, I want to be the company you know, that you save for, not, you know, not that you, not that you just go out and buy, you know, the, the cheapest thing and then not use the device, yeah. not, not that you skimp for. And so right I now, always tell people though, like I'm a huge Dave Ramsey follower and I was listening to a guy at SEI talk about he couldn't afford a, a, a exotic hunt he wanted to possibly do. And I looked at him and I said, okay, well, do you, do you drink Starbucks every day or at all? He's like, yeah, I have it, you know, three, five times a week. I go to Starbucks on my way to work. Okay. So you're willing to spend five to $6,000 a year on coffee, but you won't save money for this dream experience or a device that can enhance your life and protect your life. Like it's an excuse. So you have to find a reason to work around an excuse and prioritize where you spend your money and, and invest in yourself. We, we all have choices and yeah. we make our choices, right? And yeah. like um, at, uh, at, it was just at NWTF and had a, had a 22-year-old kid come in and um, he, heard, he heard a bunch of duck, he heard our guys blowing duck calls because, you know, the idea is that people were demoing in and, and it's not just turkey hunters at NWTF. and. Mm-hmm. And so all our guys are blowing calls, and um, and we had you know waterfall products that they were they were trying out, and this guy like jumped in. I, I was able to sit back and watch the whole thing. I watched him come in, I watched him like join into this other group, and he's having. My son was a part of it, so um, you know I just I was I was having a cool company moment, right? Yeah. And then uh, he got introduced to to me, and we started talking talking about where we hunt and blah blah blah, all that good stuff. And he's like, "Man, he goes, I really need these." And he's like, "My granddaddy can't hear thunder, and like my mom is always yelling at my dad." And like it was, and I know it came from the duck blind. I'm like, "Well, buddy, right now you're not going to find any better deal than what you're yeah. than we're standing right here at a show." And and um, and he's like, "Well, I wish." He goes, he goes. This morning I bought a set of waders for eleven hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, like what he wanted was seven forty nine. It's a lot of money. Yeah, but they were a hundred dollars off. Yeah, and there were half of those waiters, right? Yeah, and and like the waiters are fantastic. They're awesome waiters, right? But yet, until we change that twenty two year old kid's mind, yeah, that oh, that he I, needs this. He felt like he needed the waiters, but he didn't need to protect he his hearing. He wanted the waiters. Yes. He, he, he wanted needs the, the hearing waiters. protection. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Right? Yes, you're um, 100% right. Yeah. You, you want another three dozen decoys. You want a faster duck boat. You want a higher trained yeah. dog, right? Like, um, and if we can change, and this is where I, I know that you're going to rock it. And, and it's not about rocking it for Tetra. If, it's if for people. It's for people. And because, like, you will never, ever, ever feel any pressure from me about that it, you need to be talking about Tetra. Mm-hmm. You need to be talking about hearing protection mm-hmm. if you're so inclined, right? When you have the opportunity, when you are passionate and you clearly are, and you have in your soul reason to be mm-hmm. very passionate about this. It's not about buy a Tetra. It's about do the smart thing for yourself. Yeah. Pay your pay your future self a really good deal right now, and um, and that's about hearing protection mm-hmm. and just protect it now. And I look at it as as the co-founder and the owner of the company is that it's incumbent upon us if we can get someone yeah. to the category, and if we can say that this twenty two year old kid is willing to put off those eleven hundred dollar waders so that he can buy a seven hundred dollar set of of duck ears. Um, that is when we've made it. Yeah. And, and that we, and that should be happening anyway. Like it 
you you gave the description of hearing the woods come alive. Was that a gobble right there? Come on. With earmuffs on, I could hear it. I mean, that's a shooter gobble right there. Gobble. Is that the one we chased this morning? That freaking turkey. <laughs> God. I hate that. You knew red- it was going to happen. I like, hate that redheaded turkey. Uh, th- that makes you know that God has a wicked sense of humor, yeah, right? He's right there. <laughs> literally laughing at us. Like, uh. anyway, okay. Um, so yes, that's. I agree. That's the dynamic we need to change, and, and it needs to be a collective dynamic. And there's so many people that are, you know, wear blaze orange, wear eyes, wear ears at the range. Where is that happening on the hunt? And yep. and so I, I commend you guys for everything that you've done. So when people want to learn more, they just go to tetrahearing.com. Yep. And um, you're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You guys do a great job. Um, if you have any questions, they have a great customer service team. You can call there and talk to their team. What's Do you have the customer service hotline? It is uh, 1-888-HEAR-HUNT. Okay, so That's how about that? Easy. Uh, Look at that. We got lucky on that. Yeah. Um, you can jump online. Uh, we follow up on all chats. Uh, even if you're even if you're not there, we'll follow up on the chat uh, when we come back. Um, th- these guys are on the phone all the time. They're doing forty emails a mm-hmm. day out. Like, yeah. We just want to we want to help you have your best outdoor experience yeah. as possible. So. And and not, you know, telling you guys you have to do this, but educating you as to why you should do this and why you should prioritize it. So, um, anything further takeaway wise that you want to throw uh, in uh, or? again, I've kind of I've, I've jumped ahead of myself on on a few things. Uh, this is um, this is a new friendship. Yeah. Uh, and this is a new which is the foundation of, I think, the best partnerships. Mm-hmm. And um, and clearly, okay, here we go again. So, <laughs> you know, you you and your dad, when you yeah. told me about your father's story, mm. and um, I mean, that's why it just kind of works. And I couldn't be more proud that that in four years we're attracting someone like the quality of what you've built, the platform that you have. Well, I, um, I'm honored so, to be working with you guys. I mean, coming from my background... Um, you know, it's, it's, it is a life changing experience being able to hear or losing your hearing. And, um, it is a message that more people need to hear and understand. And, you know, it's a little bit like you take a young person and they think it'll never happen to me. You know, the, the person that smokes or chews and they, they think that they're never going to get cancer or emphysema. And then with birthday cake, yeah. things happen. And so this is kind of that same type of surgeon general's warning from dr bill (laughs) uh but i mean we really need to as a as a community embrace health and safety and uh put our loved ones on a more priority level and and growing up in in living with with someone with such significant hearing loss i can tell you like unless you want to be like listening to your tv on a hundred and then you have to buy custom surround sound just to hear things and everybody in the block can hear your television, uh, you need to think about this. <laughs> it's bad. You know, I mean, it's it's sad. It's tragic. When when you are in the field and you see someone that loses so much of the experience. Yep. And how it impacts, negatively impacts Negative. their life. Yeah, and, it does. Um, and so we can give that back to some degree and help with that. But then also we can prevent. So I think um, that that's, the, that's how profound you guys are and everything that you're doing. Um, and actually taking the time and seeing a place for protection and enhancement in the hunting community is, I give you an applause for that. I mean, like I said, even this morning, I can't believe I heard those turkeys walking. <laughs> like, unreal. Yeah. It was just crazy. This is kind of a supercharged experience, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's two things. Like you, you, once they got close enough, you probably would have heard them. I would have so, saw them before yeah, I heard them. Um, I'm going to wear bear baiting. I want to see if that changes my life because you never hear a bear. You just see them like they just show up. That's going to be the test. That's going to be the test. That may be the Christy (laughs) Titus program. Well, I don't have baited bear hunt this year, so I might have to wait till next year. But, you know, one of these days I want to see how this goes. But the the tricky part with noise is that um, and this is this is one I have a short list of questions that. If, if things go as I hope they do and I end up in heaven, uh, a couple of my questions for God, one of them is going to be like, why did you not put any pain receptors in the inner ear? Yeah. 
every place else, our toe, our knee. You can, look at what you do to you hit your shin or you this. You have cactus on your leg. Little. Uh, I don't think you have a pain ooh, receptor on wow. your leg. Let's okay. be honest here. That's a good one. <laughs> like genuinely. That, that looks like you could loose. <laughs> There's like a workman's comp in there <laughs> somewhere. Right? But, but the inner has no pain receptors. Yeah. Right. Look at when you have a sore tooth. Yeah. It and, hurts. Um, or you get. Well, hit. you do have some pain receptors. You have. Uh, what what is it when it rings? Uh, and so that's the it's so tinnitus or tinnitus, or tinnitus, tinnitus depends yeah. on what part of the country that you're that you're in. Yeah, but, um, and that's ringing in the ear. That's the symptom that damage has been done. That there's been an insult to those hair cells, those nerve yeah. fibers, those piano keyboards, right? And that's if if a key is stuck, that's that internal ringing that you hear, and it's because there's been too much stimuli. You pushed too hard on that key, and it's now it's out of tune mm-hmm. and, and, it, and, it can, and once it gets broken and here's here's the key and this is probably here's here's my clothes uh once it gets broken the worst part about it you can't fix it no. like you can't go it's one of the body parts you know if if our eyes get bad enough they can go in surgically they can they can fix the fix the retina they can put a new lens in they can put a new hip in they can do a transplant of your heart and lungs they can like you think of all the things that, that modern medicine that can modern, do you we cannot do it that's where i go back to that expensive band-aid where we started it's like mm-hmm. making things louder is just a band-aid mm-hmm. it's not fixing the true problem so if we can prevent the problem and let that amazing that amazing ear work like it was designed mm-hmm. it's not just the ear it's the ear and the brain mm-hmm. they they work in tandem and so um, the whole goal is to um, Mother Nature and Birthday Cake. We're going to have to call this Birthday Cake, right? This is going to be the right. name that's in the title somehow. Know that I like birthday cake. Mother Nature okay. and Birthday Cake are going to give enough business to yeah. to audiologists and to hearing aid salespeople, mm-hmm. right? Um, let's just slow the train down. Mm-hmm. Maybe stop it, but let's at least slow it down. Yeah. So, Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bill, for joining us uh, for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast in beautiful Colorado. If you guys know anybody that you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, I really want to invite you guys to share it on your platforms. Give it a like, give us a five-star review. And again, thank you all. Um, we're here to help you guys be more educated, be more informed, and hopefully um, help do that within your own families as well. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.